Welcome to worship at Eden Prairie United Methodist Church. In the Christian church, we're beginning what's called the season of Lent. Now, it's a season leading up to the celebration of Jesus' resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday. And we spend these weeks leading up to Easter really focused on God in Jesus and what God has to teach us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Typically, in Lent, Christians give things up. They give things up in order to make space and energy and time to focus on God. This Lent at Eden Prairie United Methodist Church, we're going to focus our season of Lent through one question, what makes a hero? And we're gonna do that looking at God's definition of hero through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're also gonna do that as we turn to the children every week and we have the children teach us a little something about heroes and superpowers and what makes a great superhero. So let's turn to the children now. The doctors and nurses are helping out with COVID because they're helping COVID um, not spread so quickly. Um, kindness and like helping people out. <laughs> One, they're fun to block out my brothers, and two, that could save people from like falling. What makes a hero? Alter egos, superpowers, winning the battle of good versus evil? Jesus is the ultimate superhero who walked among us, doing what was fair and just, being compassionate and taking God seriously. Jesus is our example. And Jesus is our savior. Jesus, teach us to walk in your way. Teach us to be your kind of hero. We light this candle here in the worship space, and we invite you to light a candle in your own home to mark this time and to remember that God is with us. Let us pray. God, you are good. The world you have created is good. Help us as we discern good from evil light from darkness, nothingness from your presence. Teach us to do justice, be compassionate, and take you seriously. Amen. Please join me in singing our gathering song, God is Good. Hear these ancient words from Micah the prophet and from Paul's letters to the Ephesians. But he has already made it plain how to live, what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously take God seriously. Watch what God does and then you do it. 
like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you, keep company with him, and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. encounter, Jesus teaches on what it means to be good. Listen for where this story challenges you. Just then a religion scholar stood up with a question to test Jesus. Teacher, what do I need to do to get eternal life? He answered, what's written in God's law? How do you interpret it? He said, that you love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and muscle and intelligence, and that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. Good answer, said Jesus. Do it and you'll live. Looking for a loophole, he asked, and just how would you define neighbor? Jesus answered by telling a story. There was a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They took his clothes, beat him up, and went off leaving him half dead. Luckily, a priest was on his way down the same road. But when he saw him, he angled across to the other side. Then a Levite, a religious man, showed up. He also avoided the injured man. A Samaritan traveling the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted him onto his donkey, led him to an inn, and made him comfortable. 
In the morning he took out two silver coins and gave it to the innkeeper, saying, Take good care of him. It is, if it costs any more, put it on my bill, and I will pay you when I, on my way back. What do you think? Which of these three became the neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? The one who was treated him kindly, the religion scholar responded. Jesus said, Go and do the same. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing, A Fire is Meant for Burning. wasn't always in a battle of good versus evil. Everything changed when a young Bruce Wayne had a really transformative experience in his life. In that dark alley that night, he witnessed the murder of his parents. And out of that pain, Batman was born. Bruce Wayne becomes this force for good, dressed as a bat, armed with finely tuned physical skills and intellectual abilities as well, vowing never to use deadly force, especially a gun, the deadly force that took the lives of his parents. In his relentless fight against evil, Batman becomes this pop cultural hero for us. What comes to mind when you hear the word hero? Our lives are full of pop cultural heroes like Batman. Think Superman, Captain America, and Wonder Woman. Maybe your heroes are people, real life people like Nelson Mandela or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Mother Teresa. Our lives are full of real life heroes too. Think nurses and firemen and teachers. Maybe you have a relative who's a hero to you because of their courage or their kindness or their love. Our heroes, all of them, offer us an example to follow. In this season of Lent, we're gonna look at all kinds of heroes, searching for an example to follow, challenged to become a hero ourselves, and remembering what actually makes a hero especially as we see Jesus define and redefine it. We'll discover through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that Jesus calls us to quite a different kind of victory, a victory obtained through humility and service and love, a victory won through the cross and the tomb, a victory that is ours in Jesus. Let's turn back to our pulp cultural heroes for a moment. Our pulp Pop cultural heroes are people who are in good versus evil battles all the time. And in that battle, good wins out every time for our pop cultural heroes. This struggle between good and evil is so fundamental to our world. From the time we are little, we expect good to overcome evil every time. We probably don't remember the first time good didn't win out, but it probably came out of our mouths sounding like this. That's not fair. 
But we have all had the experience when good did not win that day, when someone or something evil came out on top. And in our maturity, we know that happens more often than we would like. Our pop cultural heroes are people who win, e win, who battle evil and win, and they win every time. Given our real world experience, we look up to these pop cultural heroes. We want to be like them. We want to be a force for good in the world. We want to be the catalyst for good to win and to win every time. We want to be a pop cultural kind of real life hero. However, I think this good versus evil dichotomy seems far too simplistic for our real life experience. What is good and what is evil? Sometimes this distinction isn't always clear cut. It's nuanced with fudgy, fuzzy edges and grayish lines. Discerning what is good and what is evil is more complicated than your younger selves understood the first time we uttered the words, that's not fair. Now, Batman knew that kind of nuanced battle between good and evil. Searching for his nemesis, the Joker, he finally corners this evil and dangerous force. He has found the Joker inside an abandoned building, but just as he's about to catch the Joker, Batman hears the cry of a little girl. She's trapped in that same building, and in that moment, our pop, pop culture hero has a choice to make. Capture the evil Joker once and for all, or save the little girl and let the Joker get away. Batman is a hero because he chooses the latter. He saves the girl, and that is good. In doing so, it seems that evil may have won the day as the Joker escapes. The nuanced battle between good and evil is real. In the story from Luke's gospel, Jesus redefines what is good. More accurately, Jesus invites us to see goodness from God's perspective. He tells a story about a man who's beaten and left for dead. Three people encounter the injured man, and two think they are doing what is good. One does what his heart tells him to do. The priest and the Levite think they are doing good. They don't do anything to the man. They are not evil toward him. They do not further victimize him. They don't even touch him because to touch him would make them unclean. And being unclean would render them, un them unable to perform their religious duties in the temple. And that would not be good. So they do what they think is good. They avoid the man altogether. Then along comes a Samaritan. Now the Samaritan is supposed to be categorized as an evil person. Samaritans were descendants of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. They were a small remnant of people who remained in Israel while others in the faith were taken into captivity by Assyria and taken into Assyria. The Samaritans who were left in the land of Israel intermarried and assimilated into the Assyrian culture that had captured them. It was likely a survival technique in their day. The way Samaritans lived out their faith in God changed over time, including the central location for their worship, not at, all, not at the temple in Jerusalem anymore, but now on a mountain in the land in which they lived. And when the people of God returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, the Samaritans opposed their efforts because for, for Samaritans, it, that temple was no longer the central location of worship. So Samaritans were considered the worst of the worst by first century Jewish people who landed their faith at the temple in Jerusalem. People whose belief was in belief in God was thought to be distorted, these Samaritans. These Samaritans were thought to be people whose inner marriage had gone against Jewish law of the day. And because of these things, Samaritans were considered evil. It's into this context that Jesus, a first century Jewish rabbi teacher, tells the story. He challenges this first century dichotomy of good versus evil around Samaritans. Jesus continues his story to show, how, show a Samaritan doing what is good. The Samaritan does what his heart tells him to do. The Samaritan gives the man first aid. The Samaritan bandages the man's wounds, carries the man to safety, and cares for the man's ongoing healing. It is clear who does what is good in this story. And the man to whom Jesus tells the story, a religion scholar, remember, a first century Jewish man, 
cannot bear to answer Jesus's question, who do you think was the neighbor? In other words, who did what was good? The religion scholar man can only reply, the one who treated him kindly, he cannot bear to say that the Samaritan was good. In the good versus evil battle, Jesus calls us to be this kind of good. And there is only one way to be this kind of Samaritan good. Paul says it this way in the letter to the Ephesians, watch what God does and then do it. Explaining further, Paul says, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with God and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He did not love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Kate Shelley was just such a hero. On the afternoon of July 6, 1881, heavy thunderstorms caused a flash flood over Hadley Creek in Iowa. It washed out the timbers that supported a railroad trestle over the river. Now, a pusher locomotive had been sent from Mongoina, Iowa. They were sent there to check on the track conditions, and the, the train crossed the Des Moines River Bridge on its journey to check the railroad tracks, but then it plunged into Hadley Creek when the bridge fell away at about 11 o'clock at night. A crew of four men went into the river with the train. Now Kate, Kate Shelley had heard the crash. She knew that an eastbound passenger train was due in Mongona about midnight and it, that it was to stop shortly before heading east over the Des Moines River and then to Honey Creek. Kate looked around and she found two surviving crew members and shouted to them that she would go get help. Kate had to cross the Des Moines River Bridge to get help. She, just, she started that journey with a lantern in hand. Remember, it's late at night. She started that journey with a lantern in hand, but it went out partway over the bridge. So she had to crawl the span of that bridge on her hands and knees in the dark. Lightning became her only source of illumination. Once she got across that Des Moines River Bridge, Kate started the two mile journey on foot to Mangona Depot. She needed to get there to sound the alarm. She had to warn that coming passenger train of the dangers that lie ahead of it. And she needed to get help for Edgar and Adam, the two survivors of the derailment. She led a party back to rescue those two survivors and the passenger train that she had had an opportunity to warn was safely stopped at Scranton, Iowa with about 200 people on board. Kate Shelley was a hero who loved like Jesus. She didn't simply recognize good, she shared good. Both the Samaritan in Jesus' story and Kate Shelley recognized goodness and they shared it. And we are called to do the same. Micah offers us a three-part journey of what it looks like to share this goodness. The prophet calls us to do what is fair and just to our neighbor. Often that means taking a step back and looking at the big picture. It means asking the difficult questions in our world. It is not just feeding the hungry, but asking why are people hungry? It's not just housing the homeless, but asking why are people without shelter? It's not just binding up the wounds of an assault victim, but asking why are people being assaulted here? Secondly, we are called to be compassionate and loyal in our love, like offering a meal to someone, like listening to a person who is struggling, like driving someone to get their COVID vaccine, like pulling a garbage can. I saw my neighbor do this. He pulled the garbage can up my neighbor's driveway because it was icy that day. And he knew the age and condition of, the, of our neighbor, an elderly woman, and he pulled her trash can all the way back up to the garage door. Such an act of compassion and love. It's like saying hello to that kid at school who is constantly ignored by others. These are the ways that we are compassionate and loyal in our love, and they are the ways that we share goodness in the world. And thirdly, the prophet Micah calls us to take God seriously. We are called to walk with God. We are called to be open enough to seek God's presence. We are called to be humble enough to open our lives to God's forgiveness where it's needed. We are called to turn toward God. We are called to fall in love with God over and over and over again. 
In the epic battle between good and evil, we are called to do what Jesus would do, to recognize goodness in our complicated and nuanced existence, and to share that goodness, to pour it back out into the world and eventually back to God. Because in the end, it isn't that good will always win out. Instead, in the end, there is God, who is the source of goodness. There is good, there is evil, and then there is God. Take God seriously and share goodness in the world. Be a hero. Amen. Holy God, who is good, and in whom we can discover our own ability to be good, we pray, for those who struggle with an internal battle between good and evil. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to see the light of God's goodness in the world, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For the children of God who suffer because people are, are not always good, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For the systems in our country that continue to perpetuate evil rather than goodness, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For eyes to see where we can change the world for good, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For our efforts to be the light of God for others, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For our own journey toward doing what is fair and just, being compassionate and to taking God seriously, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we have spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts, we pray to you now as we pray these ancient words that speak when we do not have words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive that those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to join us in this season of Lent for a special all-church read. We're going to read together the book 40 Days, 40 Prayers, 40 Words, and you can find information about how to acquire that book on our website. You can join us on Wednesday evenings for our worship in the wilderness at 6 p.m., after which we will gather in small groups to discuss the book 40 Days, 40 Prayers, 40 Words. And so we invite you to be a part of that. Again, the information is on our website. Please join me in singing our closing song, Goodness is Stronger Than Evil. God on each of us. Transform us to become more like Jesus by embracing good and rejecting evil and making us heroes who do good. Amen.